Hey! So, if you don't know, on top of competing in Chromacore this past summer, I was also working a job as an art camp counselor. In hindsight, I have no clue how I managed to do both of these things. Basically, my sister worked there, and she convinced me to work there as well since I couldn't really find anything else to do. I wouldn't consider myself very qualified, there are hardly any kids in my life, so at this job interview I was like, mm, yep, you know, I was a kid once. <laughs> and I was hired! It wasn't exactly my desired area of work, but I was willing to give it a try, and I could put something with art on my resume, yay! And something to make a video on. Hopefully none of my coworkers or campers come across this video, and if you do, uh, please don't dox me, thank you! This camp was made up of a lot of different camps, like laser tag, animals, etc. And it was a day camp where kids would come back each day Monday through Friday to the same camp. So I had the same kids all week, and then I would get a new batch on Monday. Some weeks I was alone with around 7 to 10 kids, or with another counselor, and 14 to 20 kids. And all in my particular art camp were 9 through 12 years old. I was hoping that, you know, since it's art camp, all these kids would be the calm and nice type, but <laughs> nope! Some of these kids were the nice, quiet, artsy ones, but a lot of the kids weren't in the camp because they liked art, but because it's just what their parents signed them up for that week. We would do activities like pressing leaves into clay, making stuff out of paper and cardboard, and carving soap. The soap carving was my favorite because it was the easiest to set up, and unlike a lot of other activities, it was chill enough that I could usually do my own carving alongside the kids. Almost every week, there would be one kid who would ask if they could eat the soap. Now that I think about it, it's probably because we gave them the soap on a plate with a spoon to carve with. Some weeks, one of the group would have the idea to gather their resulting soap shavings and add water, molding it together into a big soap mound. <laughs> then, after realizing this plan would work, they would go around and ask the others for their soap carvings, making it into an even bigger and glorious abomination. I swear, every week one of these things would happen, and it would feel like parallel universes. I was given a first aid kit to have on me at all times, and I honestly didn't think I would really need to use it at all. I mean, it's art camp, what are we gonna do? But again, I was wrong. I forgot how accident prone you are as a human being under the age of 13. One even managed to cut themselves with the plastic spoon we used for soap carving. And when I gave them the band-aid, I was like, you know what, I'm kind of impressed. <laughs> We also did some activities with paints, and the paints we used were permanent acrylics. Very stressful. I really didn't want to send kids home with stained clothes. We did have aprons for them to wear, which helped. Since the color options were white and green, I would tell them that they had the option to either be a baker or a Starbucks employee. This would make them all rush to grab one. All part of my plan. I fooled them good, haha. <laughs> Also, apparently the Starbucks option is seen as the more ideal career. Sorry, bakers. I would usually man the paints, and I would have a camper tell me what color they wanted and fill their palette for them. And I had to guard the paints at all times to keep them from getting it themselves. Someone tried to sneak it themselves, despite this being a very clear rule. I guess they just thought, like, oh, you know, I just want one color. <laughs> and that often resulted in paint shooting out of the pump and occasionally getting out of clothing. I would get a lot of paint on myself because of this, and especially after helping everyone get their paints. Parents probably saw me and knew immediately where I was working. My black camp shirt ended up quite colorful. Before and after I was with my own group, I would sometimes be assigned to do other jobs like check-in and check-out. One job I did was checking parent IDs to make sure that they were authorized to pick a kid up. I had to scroll through a long list of kids' names on my phone, frantically singing the ABCs in my head to find their kid. Meanwhile, the parent is just standing there holding up their driver's license wondering what's taking so long, like, please give me back my child. Some of our activities were games, some more stressful than others, and the most stressful ones were certainly the most memorable. For one, we had a big spray-painted circle with a large piece of paper in the center. Teams would stand together around the circle with a supply of paint in their team color and tied together sponges. In the given time, they would dip their sponges in their paint and throw them at the paper, and when time was up, the team with the most of their color on the paper won. Luckily, we used washable paint for this, but when they ran out of sponges to throw, the team would have to nominate one poor person to have to run out into the line of fire and grab them back. They were equipped with flimsy ponchos that we reused each week and got more and more torn and useless as the summer went on. This was especially stressful and we where I was the only counselor, and I had to set this up and run it by myself. And in this time, I saw so many ways that this can go wrong. My rule explanation got longer each week. I would walk out there, middle of the circle, and as loud as I could, okay guys, wear your hood up if you don't want to get paint in your hair. Take off your shoes if you don't want paint all over your shoes. You can only throw behind the line. Don't step over the line when you throw. Don't intentionally throw your sponges at other people, please. Aim for the paper. Also, don't run out there and use your body as a shield to block the other teams from hitting the paper. Very committed sacrifice, but still cheating. When you run out to collect your sponges, don't try to rub your team's color all over the paper. Please! Of course, it was hard to tell if a paint sponge thrown directly to another kid's face was extremely lucky 
or incredible aim. Either way, it was kind of funny. One camper got just a little bit of paint in his hair and insisted on it being cut off with scissors by the other campers. I was like, no, please, this is not happening under my supervision. Definitely though, my biggest weekly challenge was getting my kids to clean up after themselves when we finished an activity. Sometimes they would just refuse to or clean up partway and then just stand around doing nothing. I really had to go around like, Jonathan, you pick up those scissors. Whose half-eaten lunch is this? If you are making bracelets, you need to come pick up these beads that are spilled all over the ground. That means you, Veronica. I think cleaning up the whole mess myself would have been easier. Since my sister was working in a different area of the same camp, I would get lots of kids asking me if we were sisters, which was always pretty funny, but especially funny was when one thought we looked similar just by coincidence. She was like, hey, you look a lot like this other counselor, and you know, you sound a lot like her too. Huh, how interesting that is. No way. Even though I was working with 9 through 12 year olds, I would also spend a lot of time with and see a lot of 5 to 8 year olds around. Even though I definitely preferred working with the 9 through 12 year olds, I will say that 5 to 8 year olds win in the funny category. One time I was sitting out in the grass playing a card game with some of my campers and this tiny little boy, probably like 5, maybe 6, comes up to me and says, you are going to die today. I was like, what? <laughs> My life flashed before my eyes. It's like, what do you mean? I want to live. So it turns out he just wanted me to lie down in the grass and pretend to be dead, but he left me hanging long enough to make me think for just a moment that my prophecy had been foretold. But hey, I'm still here. As it turns out, I have too many stories for one video, so stay tuned for part two. I don't tell a lot of stories on this channel, so I hope you enjoyed something different. It's nice to just talk and not read off of a script doing art tutorials every once in a while. As much as I love doing tutorials. But anyways, here's some videos you might like to watch next, and thanks for watching!